Representing you in the Capitol, and I represent a part of South Minneapolis. We need you to help us change this law and pass the law. So thank you very much, Jim Riddle. Well, thanks, Karen, and let's hear it for Karen Clark. She's truly a leader for human rights, environmental rights, and we're so lucky to have her in the Minnesota House. And thank you all for coming out today to march against Monsanto. Um, before I speak, my county attorney tells me that I need to give a little disclaimer. I'm an elected official. I serve on the Winona County Soil and Water Conservation District Board and also on the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency Citizen Board. But none of my remarks represent the positions of the SWCD, MPCA, Governor Dayton, or former Governor Jesse Ventura. <laughs> So like Karen mentioned, I uh, do uh, farm uh, near Winona, Blue Fruit Farm. We raise perennial fruits, uh, but I also serve on the board of Right to Know Minnesota. And we're the lead group pushing for mandatory labeling in the state of Minnesota. And I, if you haven't already done so, I invite you to stop by our booth down there to sign our petitions. And also, we're not soliciting for donations today, but I'd just like to let you know that we have received a $100,000 matching uh, uh, gift. And so if you go to our website, righttoknowmn.org, and make a donation, your dollars will be doubled. Uh, so just thought you should know that, uh, which is great news. But I'd like to talk today about what we know and what we don't know about GMOs. We know that genetically modified organisms or GMOs are novel, transgenic, that means genetic material from one species put into another that could normally never uh, breed and cross. Uh, transgenic patented, they're all patented and that's what this is all about, patenting the life forms uh, they're patented plants, animals, and microorganisms that have never existed in nature before and never been part of the human diet. We know that the cost of seeds has tripled since GMOs have been released. We know that there's been a massive increase in the amount of herbicides used, as well as development of herbicide-resistant weeds and insecticide-resistant pests since GMOs have been introduced. We know that researchers at the University of Minnesota have attributed the decline in monarch butterflies to the widespread planting of GMO crops. We know that researchers in Indiana have shown that the GMO toxins in Bt corn, in this Bt corn, every cell of the plant is engineered to contain an insecticide and those insecticides remain biologically active in the water and in the soil and they're killing aquatic organisms in the streams and rivers. We know that corn rootworms, which is one of the pests that the Bt corn is designed to kill, have now developed resistance to that Bt insecticide that's resulted in an increase in insecticides including neonicotinoids that harm bees and other pollinators. We know that GMO soybeans contain high levels of glyphosate or Roundup in the beans themselves, whereas non-GMO soybeans contain no such residues. We know that glyphosate or Roundup is a systemic poison and it's now found in human breast milk. We know that female hogs when fed GMO feeds for 22 weeks, had significantly heavier, heavier uteri, and all hogs that were fed the GMO rations had high levels of stomach inflammation than compared to hogs fed non-GMO feeds. We now know that the porcine epidemic diarrheal virus, which has killed millions of pigs in Minnesota and throughout the Midwest, has only been found in hog herds that consume GMO rations and is not being found in hogs that eat organic feed. We know that the rates of childhood cancer and birth defects skyrocketed in Argentina when Roundup Ready soybeans were introduced. 
We know that rats fed genetically engineered corn for their entire lives develop tumors and die earlier than rats fed normal corn. We know from research in Canada that the Bt toxin in this GMO corn crosses the placental barrier and is found in the fetal cord blood of humans. We know that over 30 countries and now counties in California, Oregon, just earlier this week, and Washington State have voted to ban GMO crops in their counties. We know that 64 countries and the states of Vermont, Connecticut, and Maine have passed laws requiring mandatory labeling of foods containing GMOs. And we want Minnesota to be next in the next legislative session. We know that Monsanto is the world's leading manufacturer of GMOs and Roundup herbicide. But despite all we know about GMOs, we don't know when they're in our food. Here in Minnesota, we need to change that and have mandatory labeling. Once mandatory labeling is adopted, we'll be able to conduct the epidemiological research and understand the public health impacts of GMOs. We will be able to choose foods that are consistent with our religious beliefs and our ethical values. We'll be able to make informed choices for our families and the free market will determine the fate of this novel technology. We have a right to know. So please, get warmed up for the march and join me and the members of Right to Know Minnesota in saying five times, GMO, let us know. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jim Riddle. I don't know if people know, Jim is really one of the heroes and one of the most knowledgeable people on both organics, being on one of the, the original, um, or early on in the, with the National Organic Standards Board as a member, and then also an expert on GMO. So thank you, Jim. We'd like to give a warm welcome to uh, Hokahe Drum Group, uh, Lakota Drum Group, who are here to, um, to honor us with um, some songs. And um, we're just um, extremely appreciative that they're, um, for their commitment and for them uh, honoring us today. Thank you.
Sasakamati, muchas gracias. Hokahe Drum. They're going to be with us um, uh, throughout the day today, and they're going to welcome all of the marchers back to the state capitol. So we look forward to hearing more from Hokahe today. Um, no, I'm going to do some video work, but uh, are you going to soon? Did you? And our next speaker is Patricia Shepard with Idle No More. Idle No More was founded in by activists in Saskatchewan. Uh, during a teaching, um, there was a, uh, uh, in response to the government's introduction of Bill C-45, which reduces the, greatly reduces environmental protections of the waterways that pass through the lands of First Nation people. So P Patricia represented Minnesota in, in helping uh, found this movement. Um, so let's put our hands together for Patricia, the Idol No More. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. Again, I want to welcome everyone um, to this wonderful worldwide, you know, support effort to raise the consciousness of the people throughout the world about what these criminals have been doing to our food. Um, I think that, you know, we really need to, you know, like I'm looking out into the audience and I'm thinking each and every one of us who are informed about what this a criminal corporation is all about you know we need to do teach-ins we need to educate our communities so many people you know within our communities aren't aware of what they're eating at the food stores and so you know I think that each and every one of us should take the responsibility and educate our communities uh, you know I've, I've been a part of educating masses and masses of people at many different levels but one of the things that we could do is think about doing teach-ins to help our communities have a better understanding about what's going on with our food um, so you know I want to talk a little bit about Monsanto because I think we need to call it what it is and they're criminals they're criminals because they're poisoning us and our government's allowing them to do it. You know, that's the truth. You know, I, you know, I'm hearing all of this great information about we have a right to know. Well, we already know they're poisoning us. You know, we need to ban it permanently. We cannot allow these people and these criminals to poison our nation through these corrupt practices. Of po you know, if any one of us were to deliberately, intentionally poison our family members, our asses would be in prison. That's where they belong. They need to be in prison because they are dangerous to our country and to the world. And the more we find out about what we need to do to take back our power as consumers, the better off we're going to be. You know, one of the most disappointing things that I found out this past week, I went to the Seward Co-op, I uh, called the Seward Co-op. I used to be a membership, a member of Seward Co-op. And, you know, I wanted to start eating healthy and, you know, you know moving in, in a... a in a way that's healthy for me and my family and my children and my grandchildren and I called him up and I asked him direct a direct question do you sell GMOs in your store and they said yeah 
This is our co-ops who are selling this out as well. So, you know, we have to come up with some sort of solution. And one solution is food sovereignty. And I'm going to explain to you what food sovereignty is. If you haven't heard of it, I think you should become aware of it because it's a, a very fast-growing movement. And I'm going to kind of lay out some things to you about what it is. Food sovereignty is the right of people to determine their own food and agriculture policies. The democratization of food and agriculture. Food sovereignty is a movement growing from the bottom up. That means you and I. Not them up there coming down on us. That means all of us at the grassroots, uh, grassroots coming together to purchase land, to start growing our own food collectively. Because that's how we're going to have to do this. There's no other way around it. Because they're not going to change their policies. So we're going to have to empower ourselves to move forward and exercise what we know is healthy eating. We need heirloom seeds. We need, you know, uh, other forms of... Uh, handling the overgrowth of, let's say, uh, weeds or whatever, well, then we get goats. They eat everything, you know? I mean, we have to, you know, we're smart people. You know, we're intelligent people. We can do this. We were living without GMOs forever. And then all of a sudden, the Bill Clinton administration signed off on this. We better know who we are dealing with. If any one of you think that the Democrats and the Republicans are different and are serving us differently, that's a lie. You better wake up. It was Bill Clinton who signed the pop. <laughs> Can you all hear me? No. Not bad. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. You know, it's like, oh my God. You know, maybe we should just do a voice, you know, person, mic. Human mic. Human mic. You know? But one of the things that we need to understand is Hillary Clinton sat on Monsanto's board. Uh, Mike Taylor, who's also sat on the board, he's also, and then Barack Obama turns around and puts this, you know, full blown legal lock on. On his FDA's, uh, he appointed him as the head of the FDA, as the de uh, de deputy commissioner. And so we have to understand who we're dealing with. It doesn't matter if they're a Democrat. It doesn't matter with, if they're a Republican. What matters is they're all enabling these criminals to poison us. That's the bottom line. So we're going to have to start moving food sovereignty. And you know, we, you know, I'm going to start a Facebook Facebook page about food sovereignty because it's real. Oh, sound systems. Yeah. Somebody just get rid of bullhorn. Yeah, yeah. Bullhorn. Bullhorn. I guess the mic is fading in and out. It's not my fault. No. Uh, Bill Clinton. Yes. Hillary is back there now? playing with the knobs. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that everyone's focused on is Monsanto labeling our food, the right to know. And, you know, one of my issues personally is not only is it Monsanto's fault for what they're doing, but it's the supermarket's fault for selling us the shit. You know, we need to hold them accountable too. Why are we all picking in those stores, in those markets like Walmart, Rainbow Food, and Cup Foods? Because they're the ones who buy from Monsanto, and they're the ones who put their food on, uh, their poison on the shelves for us to purchase. So I think, you know, we can point a lot of fingers at a lot of different directions, but one of the things that we should be pointing at is ourselves to take responsibility and take ownership of our food and engage ourselves in food sovereignty. We can do this. So miigwech, peace and I thank you all for listening. Thank you. That's uh, Patricia Shepard. Okay. Yeah.
was that? Uh, well, just organized Idol No More and stuff. Okay. I've done a bunch of stuff with Patricia. Okay. Yeah. She's cool. So Idol No More is her organization? Is what yeah, mainly. Yeah. Is the mic working? No. Yeah. You, you can hear us? Yeah. Hear me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. All right. I've been into politics. It's like, who is that means? Who are they with? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, people. Their groups. I'll leave the megaphone up here for when we, if we need it again. Hey, this guy. I love this guy. Yeah, he's a good MC. So I am recording a higher. Our next speaker is Constance Finiski with later. Children's of Vietnam Veterans so. Health Alliance. Uh, you know, Agent Orange has just has been such an uh, ongoing disaster for for vets, for especially for the people of Vietnam. Um, the, I don't know if people know 2,4-D, one of the active ingredients in Agent Orange. Um, they're uh, seed companies are appealing to uh, be able to, to coat genetically engineered seeds with 2,4-D because the genetic, because the Roundup Ready seeds, there's so much weed resistance that, that now they're having to use these older, way, way more toxic types of pesticides because of the uh, resistance to Roundup that's happening in uh, 60 million acres uh, across the country are, are now have um, Roundup ready resistant weeds. So anyway, let's welcome uh, Constance. to the organizers for having me here today. I'm really honored to represent the Children's of Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance. Uh, the Children's of Vietnam, Health, Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance is allied with the March Against Monsanto in order to create... I'm sorry, I'm really nervous. In order to shed a greater light on the travesties that Monsanto has committed and continues to commit to this day. COVA's Mar Children's of March, I'll refer to children's of, um, the Children of Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance as COVA from now on. Um, COVA's role in the March Against Monsanto provides real world examples of the devastating effects of chemicals that Monsanto produces and, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the, I'm so nervous, I'm so sorry. <laughs> brothers were boots on the ground in Vietnam. My father was a medic who drove through the jungles of recently sprayed jungles and um, was covered in Agent Orange dust every single day. Just to get to wounded soldiers. Um, not just to, but you know what I mean. Um, my dad suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, addiction problems, social and social anxiety disorders that prevent him from getting the medical care that he requires. My uncle Tony is dying from heart disease directly related to Agent Orange. The Veterans Administration acknowledges his heart, his heart disease is from Agent Orange and compensates him every single month monetarily. After returning home from Vietnam, my parents were married and they had two kids, my sister and myself. And after we were born, we had our health problems started pretty much immediately. I'm going to tell you three stories today about my life so you can understand the devastating effects chemicals have on families. We're going to go through first, second, and third generation Agent Orange exposures. At the age of 14, I became very ill. My disease went undiagnosed for more than two years. My the doctors were so confused. My mom poured through medical journals and found myasthenia gravis and immediately contacted my family care, care physician. And three days later, I was diagnosed with a rare form of muscular dystrophy called myasthenia gravis. I immediately went to the Michigan Clinic for Neurological Disorders and was administered a Tensilin IV to confirm diagnosis. Before all this happened, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't swallow, I couldn't open my eyes, I couldn't move my, I'd have to move my limbs with my other limbs just so I could do it. Um, 
After the Tenslin IV was administered, I was able to move, breathe, my eyes could open, I could move my limbs, and my doctor said, you know, get her to Children's Hospital right now and get her something to eat. The, the medical help that I was given that day couldn't come soon, soon enough as I knew that I would die without medical assistance. It was a relief. Um, I ate the biggest salad when I got to Children's Hospital. It was like the most monstrous salad. Um, and a few hours later after that, the tensile and IV wore off and I was back to partial paralysis. I spent the next six years in and out of hospitals. I couldn't work. I couldn't, really couldn't do much of anything. Um, I used to get a treatment called plasmapheresis, which is similar to dialysis, starting every other day for several years, tapering down eventually to once a month. On a Tuesday morning, I woke up and called my nurse, Sam, and told him that I wouldn't be coming in for treatments today and that I probably would never, be, he would never see me again as I was going to take my medical needs into my own hands. He laughed and he said he'd see me next week. That day I decided to take my health into my own hands. I threw away my processed foods, I grew a garden, I threw away my prescription drugs, started smoking marijuana every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, I went organic. I believe that I am proof that changing your diet and the way that and what you consume has positive effects on your health. The health of humans and all of nature, and let us not forget that humans are part of nature. Of course, I worry about third generation, my daughter, and if she's a D, uh, has is carrying me DNA mutations. Trust me, these are not worries you want to have. We need to stop the use of persistent chemicals in our environment. We need to contact our local leaders, state and national, to ban these chemicals in our areas, in our yards. If you see your neighbors spraying chemicals, ask them not to. Inform them what they are and what they can do to the health of humans, animals, and plants. So I went into remission. I started eating organic, and my family thought, okay, our nightmare's over. Um, six years later, my twin sister became very ill. Um, today she suffers from um, a disease called cyclic vomiting syndrome. Um, to be quite frank, she doesn't want to live anymore. Um, these are the devastating effects that these chemicals have had on my family. Every day she throws up, she can't move, she's on high doses of Stadol, which is um, a narcotic and morphine, just to be able to, to talk to her kids every day. She lays in bed, she, she has absolutely no quality of life, and this is directly because of the chemicals that Monsanto continue to produce and wreak havoc on our environment. We have to stop this. We have got to stop this. Agent Orange was the most pervasive and widely used chemical in Vietnam. It's one of a cutter, color, excuse me, one of a co class of color-coded herbicides, and the barrels were painted with a stripe of, that indicated the color. And Agent Orange was painted orange, so that's why uh, it has the name Agent Orange. Um, the dioxin that is a byproduct of Agent Orange has had devastating health ailments and conditions for first, second, and third generation Vietnam veterans. And of course, let's not forget about the people that are living in Vietnam then and today. The third generation Vietnam have had, are having hideous birth defects, cancers. It's horrible. The, the environment is suffering greatly thanks to the chemicals Monsanto is, is producing. As a global community, we must stop the use of dangerous herbicides, whether it be used for chemical warfare or agricultural practices. 2,4-D and 2,4-5-T, which are contained in Agent Orange, are still being used today. If, any, if you see people spraying their lawns, you're at the mall, it's probably been sprayed on this lawn. These are the chemicals that are contained in Agent Orange. These are 
persistent chemicals in the environment. The more and more that these chemicals are used, it builds up in the environment and the amount of chemicals in our soil is increased year after year after year. Operation Ranch Hen was um, the U.S. military operation during the Vietnam War. It lasted 10 years starting in 1962. It was part of the herbicidal warfare program called Operation Trail Dust. Operation Ranch Hen involved uh, spraying an estimated 20 million gallons of herbicides and other defoliants on the jungles of Vietnam. Why did they do it? They wanted to reduce the vegetative cover and food sources for the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese. The U.S. government deployed 20,000 sorties between 1961 and 1971 that sprayed these chemicals. The Vietnamese government estimates that 400,000 people died and additional 500,000 children were born with birth defects shortly after spraying. And again, this still continues. The third generation is suffering greatly. COVID has given me personal comfort knowing that people like my sister and myself have a non-judgmental community to go to and discuss what's happening to families all across this country and the world. Um, if any of you on the lawn suffer from dioxin-related health ailments, you can contact the Children's of Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance um, at covvha.net or on Facebook, and we'll direct you to um, uh, support groups. We cannot idly stand by and continue to let Monsanto produce these chemicals that pollute the earth in the vast community that call it home. We need to stand up for the preservation of the natural world. As we march against Monsanto, we are standing up against GMOs, toxic chemicals, and the right to grow our own food. Imagine spraying your garden, your lawn, and your child's playground just to make it pretty or to save a few perceived dollars. Why, why do we do it? We need, to, we need to keep asking ourselves why and our neighbors why. We need to buy our food from local trusted sources. Go to the farmer's market, talk to your farmers. They will tell you if they spray. They are pretty honest at the farmer's market. And you can find that farmer that you can trust. Ask them to go to their farm. If they don't want you on their farm, you probably shouldn't be buying your vegetables from them. And of course, why not start a garden at home? The importance of knowing where our food comes from cannot be overstated. We must band together with our money and our seeds to stop purchasing from Monsanto and its allies. Start a community garden, grow a backyard garden, and support local farmers that do not spray these hideous chemicals. Only when large multinational corporations take notice that people are voting with their dollars will we see actual change. So we need to continue to buy organic or buy local to in they'll say, huh, well our bottom line is being affected. Maybe we should do this. Um, and it's gonna take, of course, a long time. Um, the need there need there needs to be balance in the natural systems, and as we push further and further away from our natural systems, we will continue to experience more reactions from nature, such as allergies cancer, soil erosion, soil degradation, and climate change. And that's just to name a few. Okay. If you see your neighbors spraying these chemicals on their lawn, please ask them to stop. Petition your local and state leaders to ban these chemicals in our environment. Elect officials that support community gardens, homesteading and organic farming and together we can make change. Thank you.